Greetings. Hello. How are you doing out there? This is John, Magi astrologer, teacher. Hi. Um, we're going to do a short video here. Thank you for coming to the space here. Uh, sorry about the light coming in on this side, making it very bright. I normally do these videos in the dead of night, early morning, but uh, I had some dreams in the early morning hours that kind of propelled me to do this. Uh, video here had a couple of them. And matter of fact, my journey in astrology and uh, dealing with the science, the prophetic science of the heavens started with dreams many years ago. As some of you that know me know, have heard me talk about this. I was living in Canada, in Saskatchewan, and um, I started to have these dreams, and uh, which was taboo to talk about because I was in the, the church system. And, you know, you didn't have anything to do with astrology, the stars, or anything like that because it was taboo it was of the devil you know and uh, matter of fact you didn't even read horoscopes so you have to go maybe through a deliverance session because you may have caught a demon or something is what we were taught and many people yet believe today so uh while i'm there in saskatchewan just basically minding my own business and doing uh, my ministry there uh, missionary into the far northern regions, I started to have these dreams and these out of the body experiences where I was taken, I was taken along the ecliptic, and my angel guide was pointing to me and showing me different constellations and different things I didn't know anything about, right? <laughs> and, uh, and I would come back and I would say, hey, you know, I had this experience that when this happened, when this conjunct take place, or when this planet is here, you know, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And within sometimes days or weeks, there would be flashed on the news. And of course, my religious leaders, they said that this is the devil, you know. And I said, well, it happened. Look, I said it. I saw it, right? And uh, But they would, you know, did not un understand it. So that's how my journey actually got started. And so I had to kind of like, you know, be very covert about it and uh, like in the closet about it because, you know, in the... Uh, a group of people that I was around, it was not accepted. It was really frowned upon. And so it was not until just some years ago that I started to openly uh, express, you know, what I believe, what I was doing and what I was seeing regarding the heavens. So fast forward. So this morning I had a couple of dreams and these dreams were regarding the Mars retrograde. Now we've been talking about the Mars retrograde uh, around this season, ever since the early part of this year. And in January, matter of fact, we post video in July and then other times throughout the year about the fall winter season that we're coming into and how intense it would become, you know, for those that are on the lower vibrational frequency, but all of us will feel it to some degree. Now, uh, this is a video, a short video, regarding uh, basically like, you know, kind of, uh, how can I say, a predictive astrology as well as esoteric astrology. And so, um, you know, uh, when we are looking, whether you're using a prophetic gift, the psychic sciences or anything like that, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, as it, it is called discerning and all of those things. Many times it is easy to pick up on negative things. And I used to wonder why, why, you know, because people would complain and say, you know, when I was writing on my website, atam.org, why are you always talking about natural disasters and these things happening, assassinations and all of that? 
And I was wondering, why am I always picking up on that? And I realized that, you know, uh, Spirit just began to reveal that, you know, where we are in uh, the, the cosmos, in this galaxy here, it's like in a, in a negative space, if you will, you know. And what I mean by that is that we are evolving and it takes both positive and negative. And we find that in our uh, uh, holy books, the Bible, the uh, Quran, uh, the, the Vedas and all of that, you know, is constantly about this duality, good and evil. And what it is, is basically just to wrap it up is that we're in a space and time and we're in a, 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 a part of the uh, universe, the cosmos, where uh, there is a lot of what we could call like negativity that is happening. And you know what? It is necessary for our development because we are evolving from this three-dimensional being uh, that we have expressed for all of these years, very limited, into this five-dimensional being. And not only are we evolving, but our, 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 our planet is evolving. Everything, and the book of Revelation calls it the new heaven, the new earth. So everything is evolving, but in order to get from point A to point Z, we got to go through all of these steps of B through Y and stuff. And some of that, you know, is not nice. We don't like it. We, it doesn't feel good. But that is a part of the evolution. Now, in order to have a complete evolution for us, there must be an involution. So we go within. And if we are honest and if we are true, uh, we go within, we look at the things that are there within our lives and uh, within our behavior and stuff that may not be positive, that may not be uh, what we would like, uh, want to really express, but we don't turn our head to it, right? You have to look at it in or and see it in order to um, uh, heal it, to overcome it, and to reconcile it. The same thing in our other dimension of the world. We see all of these things that are happening, you know, around the world. And so as a spiritual person, you know, you don't turn a blind eye to and pretend like it's not happening. Like many people in some communities, new ages up and old, just you just, you know, flutter your eyes and and just stay in the lotus position and don't even look at that. No, you will not evolve at all. You're deceiving yourself. You're deceiving yourself, you know. I believe it was the psalmist said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. So we have to walk through the valley, the low places, the shadow that we don't like to deal with, the shadow that's in your life, the shadow in my life, you know, those shadow areas, those dark areas that we hide, we don't want to look at, the shadows of uh, the area of politics, economics, uh, everything around about us, you know, we're walking through this. And if we be that light that we are and express the light that we are, it will overcome the shadow, as Yeshua said, when he came, he says, you know, <laughs> that the light is coming to the world and darkness did not comprehend it. Darkness could not overtake it. The shadow could not overtake it. And so there was uh, an exposing of that darkness or of the shadows so that the light could overcome it. So it is with you and I, the involution within doing your shadow work. If you are going to grow, if you're going to mature, if you're going to come to become that son of God, as we call it, or that fifth dimensional being, that you must look at the shadows, you must deal with the shadows. And if you're going to become the spiritual being that we were all called to be in this part of the universe to work and to bring light, you must look at the shadow around you and deal with it, speak into it. And uh, don't pretend like it's not there. Don't close your eyes. Don't close your ears and just think that you're living in some, you know, exalted transcendental state uh, because you're really not. You know, we all must experience it. We all must go through it because this is a, uh, what can I say this? This is, we are evolving in consciousness uh, uh, at the corporate letter, uh, at le uh, level, you know, all, all of us to some extent. Okay, so in saying all of that and that long, you know, it was a uh, uh, example of that. You know, as I'm, I'm, I'm uh, looking at this Mars retrograde that is taking place, you know, on the 30th, and, uh, and it's going to really set off a lot of things that's going to be felt for a while.
is we've been having the buildup of it. And I'm going to speak specifically in this country, United States of America, but this is globally, you know, and but this country here, it seems to set a pattern for other nations around the world. And so um, that's why I go mostly with this nation here, not that it is more important than your nation that you live in or anything like that, but it's kind of like a, a, a pattern a template, what you see happen here, you will see happen in many other places. But I'm gonna just show you, let me just get to this chart here, and then I'm gonna quickly, quickly go through this, hopefully, and just point out some things for you to help you to see. All right, I think you can see that. I'm gonna make it bigger for you. All right, this is uh, uh, Mars retrograde, and this is on the 30th of uh, October uh, that this chart is for today. is not the 30th, but uh, uh, this will be the, uh, on Sunday, and the timing is based on Eastern Standard Time around 9.25 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time, is when Mars right here will go into this mode here, S, which is uh, means uh, stand still or, you know, or, you know, it's going to like begin to just stand still before it retrogrades. So it's been moving forward, okay, throughout the heavens, and then it's going to come to this space here, uh, where it's going to stand still and it's going to like build up power and then it's going to reverse itself and go back. Now that's very powerful. We just came out of about six planets being in retrograde uh, in, in the month of October, you know, just, that was really just amazing. And the universe was uh, giving us the opportunity to revisit a whole lot of things in our life from various aspects and to go and correct things and to grow because, as I said, it's about involution before the evolution takes place. And of course, we're evolving, hopefully, daily. And this is why we're examining ourselves, as scripture says, you know, to see if we are in the faith daily so that we can evolve, 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 evolve until finally, as the scripture says that, you know, in a moment, in optomos, in a twinkling of an eye, you will be king, you know. And so this is a, a process that is happening, or as we would say in Canada, a process. What is happening where you are being changed within not only you, but everything around you and outside of you. And so when the planets go into retrograde, it's given us that opportunity to, to revisit some things and to deal with some things. And that's where we were. And so now we see that Mars, that's been direct, is going to be going stationary or standstill stationary. It's, uh, direct, and it's going to be in uh, in Gemini, based on the tropical zodiac. Okay, and uh, it's going to be 25 degrees in Gemini. Now, that's going to be saying a whole lot. I'm going to really just share some other things with you uh, because we've talked about this before, but I want to show you some other things in a minute here. And I'm not going to really deal with the rest of this chart here that I've cast because I believe in the last video I shared some things regarding that. It's a lot of information here, the sacred geometry here and the various squares and trines and various other aspects that's taking place here. Powerful, powerful, powerful time to be alive in. You know, this is like the time that uh, the, the, the Bible says that even the angels desired to understand and to look to see what was going to be happening because these angel guides were giving the messages to the prophets just like they're doing today, right? But they didn't fully understand them. Neither did the ancient prophets, but we are understanding and understanding better. And uh, why is that? The fulfillment of Daniel chapter 12, I believe verse 4, where he says, you know, go thou Daniel and seal up the book, seal the scroll unto the time of the end. The end, what? Not the end of the world blowing up or anything like that, but the end of a specific age, which we are at now. We're at the end of the Piscean age at is overlapping with the, the Aquarian age. Hey, so we're in the time of unsealing these things. And he says, when this happens, technology will increase. It will explode. And that's what we see happening. Knowledge will increase. So technology is increasing, exploding. And as in the natural, so in the spirit. So as natural knowledge and technology is increasing in the outer world, so is it happening in the inner world within you and I, those of us that are 
listening, those of us that are receiving, you know, from spirit and stuff, we are having quantum leaps in consciousness and knowing things and understanding things that we never knew before and even things that we may not have even studied for but there is this knowing is because of the inner technology of the spirit and that this all basically talks about so with the um with the mars going stationary uh retrograde it's going to stand still here for a while and then it's going to back up back up okay and so i want to just look at this for a moment now retrograde in gemini so what are we going to see here now mars represent the uh it's the planet of warfare it's the planet of aggression it's the planet of uh you know uh you know of uh, uh, uh how can I say, uh, power, but it, it also represents motivation and things of that sort. It is it is pure male energy. And as you see this symbol here, it is also a symbol of sexuality, which we're going to talk about in just a minute here. Okay, just want to show you here this beautiful red planet, what it looks like when it's going to be going stationary out there. Okay, here it is, here it is, here's Mars. It's gonna be going stationary, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, it is stationary right now. It appears to be just standing still in the heavens, gathering up all of this power and stuff. And then it's gonna go backward in a backward direction. So it's gonna go stationary retrograde in Gemini. Now, Gemini, it represents, uh, that's the third house of the Zodiac. You know, and it represents communication. It represents uh, intelligence. It represents education, represents travel. Uh, it, matter of fact, it represents many things. It represents like the house of the siblings and things of that sort, people in your close community. All of that is a part of the Gemini experience, right? And so when we have this planet here, Mars, that's going to be going retrograde while the sun is in Scorpio, okay, the house of secrets, the house of death, the house of regeneration and transformation, you know, uh, is very powerful because of what a lot of people don't realize that the sun of Scorpio has two ruling planets. One is Pluto, but the second one is Mars. Mars. And so, uh, and so we have a lot of fire that is out there, the fire element, although Scorpio is a water element of a sign. And so we have these two elements taking place, and then we have the Mars experience that is taking place, uh, going in retrograde, asking us to revisit things. And so in predictive astrology, what I would say is that you're about to see in the third house, since this is happening in Gemini, you're about to see some really, really crazy things happening in the media world. Now, I, I, I prophesied, predicted early part of the year that these big media networks, that you would see big changes take place and that you would see people being fired and all kinds of stuff. And I spoke this in like around January or so. Then we saw what happened with CNN just a few months ago, how they had a complete shakedown and just overturned and just, you know, and fired a whole lot of people, like, you know. And uh, and so you're going to continue to see this happening, you know, in the media world. But not only with that, but you're seeing this happening, like, with social media and other things. And so I'm not going to take time to go into all the details of, of that, but you're going to see some really, really uh, things happen there in social media. Not only that is with Mars here, since it represents aggression and violence and, and anger and stuff like that, media representing speech, you're about to see a lot of negative speech as never before in the media in the media. I mean, we've seen crazy stuff. And I thought I said this many years ago, like, you know, back in, I believe it was 20, say 15 or so, I had this experience one morning and I saw what was going to happen. And I saw some of these politicians and people that were not in office yet. And I saw the whole thing. I posted on the, on the website, atm.org. I was literally on my face, you know, uh, just weeping and crying out for this nation. And I saw what was going to happen. And that was in 2015, 2016, before that election took place. And I saw it. And so now here we are, we're about to see something even worse, something as if you thought it couldn't get, become more comical. We actually kind of like laugh about it. You know, my kids and I and some other people I know when we watch some of this, because it is so far out and 
you know, we see it and it, it's not funny, funny in that sense, but it's, you know, you wouldn't think of people in those positions or people with that status would, would, would descend to those levels and stuff. And for lack of better expression, how ghetto they are, you know, <laughs> educated, rich millionaires, millionaires or something like this. And so see, we're in a time where we have all kinds of crazy things that's happening. And so with Mars going to retrograde in Gemini, you're going to see the media uh, go really crazy with the pundits and with people on there. And you're going to hear a lot of violent, negative, aggressive, hateful speech increase, increase. It is going to increase. Mars will be uh, uh, stationary uh, retrograde continue going backwards until January the 12th of 2023. And so during this space here over the next say three months or so, it is going to escalate, you know, with the media, like the major networks on TV. I would not be surprised. I think I said this in the early part of the year, if you see fights break out right there on live TV um, with an interview that will be taking place and all at once somebody gets triggered and go off and a punch is thrown or something is thrown and stuff. Just hold that in your mind because I'm seeing that now. And so because of just craziness, you're going to see social media just go totally crazy. Just, you know, totally crazy with uh, violent speech, hate speech and other things that is happening. And this, we're already starting to see this happen. You see some of this in the news now. And see, nothing on the planet can take place until the heavens first declare it. Psalms 19 says the heavens declare, prophesy, predicts, you know, announce it. So the heavens are prepared, the heavens are, are proclaiming this. And with the Mars specific retrograde, you know, while the sun is in Scorpio, this stuff is intensifying. And you're going to see with social media, uh, uh, platforms and stuff just become a cesspool of violence and hate rhetoric and various things that is going to just be so alarming, you know, uh, as many of the people become emboldened, and I will go on how to say it, racist people become emboldened, people that have problems with people of uh, genders or various things like that. Uh, these people are going to become so emboldened over the next three months. It's going to be nauseating just seeing and hearing what is out there. But it's going to get to the point where people are going to get kind of used to it. And unfortunately, during this transition where we are, there's a lot of mass consciousness. That's what they want. That's what they want. That's what they are accepting, receiving, and uh, uh, and so these people are going to play right into them, you know, uh, because that's their base and that's what they want to hear, that's what they want to see, and that's a part of us getting through this crazy time to get into some sense. As you see now, you notice in the media and you see many of these people that are mentally ill, mentally incompetent, that are just you know, socially incompetent, just serial liars, you know, and think nothing of it. And a great part of, you know, the, the, the people just applauding, basically, and people that are supposed to be spiritual, supposed to know better, you know, that's supposed to understand, you know, have morals and values. So all of that is happening uh, due to this Mars retrograde, and what I'm saying is going to begin to increase. Now, I'm going to just go a little bit further with this uh, as this retrograde takes place, and uh, and I'm going to show you some things. I've jotted down some thoughts down here just to show you uh, 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 what else is going to take place. I showed you this Mars retrograde. Let me just put it up here again just in case uh, you didn't get it here. And I'm going to show you uh, this here. This is Mars here. And right uh, at the time, uh, on the 30th, it will be stationary. It will build up energy. And then it's going to start to back up, right? It's going to back up. And it is in Gemini, in Gemini there. And that is the house that represents communication, media, 
and all of this other stuff, uh, travel and stuff. So you can expect some things to come up in that, uh, you know, uh, sphere also regarding travel and uh, uh, with uh, the industries that have to do with, uh, you know, uh, flights and, and rail systems and things of that sort, uh, where that will be affected and there will be some things coming up regarding that, the cost of that influence that is there is very powerful that will be influencing that. Okay, and now let me just go a little bit further to show you what else. The next part of this, what really got my attention was uh, what Mars is going to be conjuncting with, what Mars is going to be conjuncting with when it goes uh, stationary uh, retrograde on the 30th here. Okay, I believe you can see this. Let me try to make it bigger. Now, we know that on the uh, tropical um, zodiac, it is in um, um, Gemini. Now, however, here, this is a positioning here that in Vedic systems, so I'm using both systems here to help you to understand. Here, I know a little bit about uh, how it works. And so in the Vedic system here, well, and not only just the Vedic system, but in actuality, at the time of this conjunct, is going to conjunct with this fixed star. There's a fixed star on the southern horn of Taurus, the bull, okay? Now, in the Maserat teachings that I do also, Taurus is a symbol of many things. It's a symbol of, of finances, prosperity, abundance, uh, and the housing, community, property, all of that. But it's also a symbol of judgment, right? And judgment meaning like, you know, where things are being brought to a point where they must be dealt with like swiftly and sharply. That may be negative. And but this Mars um, uh, retrograde is going to conjunct with al Hekka. Hekka. And uh, that's an Arabic word. And when you study, you know, this, and as you see, this is Taurus the bull. And as you know, outside near Wall Street, you have the bull symbol. You have it there in Hong Kong. It goes all the way back to the time of, um, let's say you go to the book of Exodus, you find that the Hebrew people, the real Hebrew people, by the way, when they came out of Africa, they built this golden bull calf. Right. And it was there dancing around it because this bull was worshipped during the age of Taurus. It was during the age of Taurus. OK. And so I don't want to get into a whole lot of that here. And so uh, they got a little bit confused there. When Moses came out of the mountain. He smashed it with the Ten Commandments because he was letting the people know that you're no longer in the age of Taurus. You know, you're in the age of Aries. OK. And that's where they were at that time. Then later on, we moved on to Pisces for the last 2000 years. And now we're in the age uh, on the cusp of the age of Aquarius. Right. And so but just to understand this out head come here, uh, it is, you know, that is a very important fixed star. And uh, it represents a lot of negative things. It is called also uh, Zeta Tauri. Uh, if you like looking in astronomy and studying astronomy and trying to understand that, so it's gonna it's gonna conjunct with that star, you know, uh, there. And uh, so that is gonna like set off a lot of things because number one, it is a fixed star. I think of around three something three. I think three point to degrees magnitude or something like that. Don't quote me on that. Don't remember exactly, <laughs> but uh, it was around there. And that is the southern horn like of the bull there. And so why is that important? Because number one, you have Mars, the red planet, that represents warfare. It's the, it's the ruling planet also of Aries. Aries was the god of war, right? Okay. And so it represents warfare, violence, and uh, murder, and things of that sort. But... <laughs> al it also represents the same thing. So we have these two violent stars that are connecting together and that's going to be conjunct as uh, Mars backs up, goes stationary, stands there for a while, and just along with al you know, getting this energy and that influence being exerted into the earth. And this is why you are already seeing and you will see just an increase of violence. Number one, it is going to take place in the war that is happening in Europe uh, with Russia and Ukraine. So after the 30th, there is going to be an increase 
uh, of this warfare and death and violence and things happen. You're going to see Kim Jong-un, as we spoke early part of the year in January, of, he's going to be mis misbehaving as well as China and doing things and stuff like that. You're going to see all around the world and in parts of, of Africa, just this random acts of explosive, I say explosive, because that's what it's going to be explosive because Mars uh, represents fire, firepower, okay, bombs, explosions, you know, and things of that sort. Uh, on a lower scale, it represents bullets, okay, and things, okay, so it's, this is explosive energy that is out there, and it is conjuncting with Alhetka, and Alhetka, it means violence, violence and so there's going to be an increase now some people they don't like it when i said well you shouldn't say that no i'm you know i am only reading the heavens and stuff we of course we pray we send light into situations but i don't close my eyes and pretend like i don't see what i see like you know i speak it but i know that uh we can't also pray about these things but you know if you don't know what is going on and what is happening you don't really know how to pray right or you don't know how to meditate, you know, uh, you know, uh, with with uh, specificity or with surgically, if you will, like, you know, you can, of course, pray or meditate, you know, generally. But when you know the times and the seasons, as the sons of Issachar did in, in the Bible, you know, you know what to do. You know specifically how to target your prayer and your intercession, your meditations and stuff. And so this is really a time uh, where you're going to find in the next site, like three months and stuff, a lot of people and uh, that especially if they are bipolar or have problems, mental issues and stuff like that. And if they're on medication, they need to be taking their medication so that they won't go off completely because as Mars is in retrograde, it is coming closer to the Earth coming closer. And so that energy is going to stir up violence. And uh, it is in retrograde in Gemini, which means communication. So we hear like violent speech, you know, rage and anger, road rage and things like that. Things becoming very explosive, you know, in a very short time. And with the conjunct, with Alhekka, you know, is going to just intensify the urge for unnecessary violence or overreacting to just very minor things and not understanding why. So if you are on a lower vibrational frequency and not walking in love and in peace, and you got some chip on your shoulder that you have not dealt with and some issues that are deep within your mind that you have not dealt with, anger, violence, rage issues, you need to start to deal with these things now. You need to start to bring balance to yourself now so that as this energy moves uh, into the earth and exerted into the earth, it will not trigger you to say things or do things that you may regret. And I just feel that very strongly or prophetically, I felt. Holy Spirit is speaking to us regarding that. So with this conjunct with Alhetka, which means violence, death, you're going to see an increase of sexual related deaths. OK, sexual related deaths uh, where people are, you know, killing their spouses or raping just people and killing just there is an increase that because the heavens are declaring this. So now we know how to pray. We know how to meditate. Cover yourself, cover your kids, your grandkids, your neighbors, your nieces, your nephews, like from various types of predators or people that are out there, you know, stalkers and things of that sort, you know. And so because that energy. Is will be intensified over the next three months due to this conjunct with Alhetka. And it also represents male violence. So a lot of this violence and a lot of the issues will be coming from men. It will be coming from men, you know, and uh, because Mars is a masculine planet and you showed you the symbol there, uh, which represents sexuality, male sexuality. And so there is an increase. There is an increase in urge to do various things. Uh, out there. Now, another point I want to bring out to you is this, that um, that Mars rules our area. And as I was meditating on this earlier, uh, 
after I woke up from the dream, uh, the, the dreams that I had and stuff like that. Aries is the, you know, there was the Aryan age. And without saying too much so that people won't get offended, right? Uh, there was the age of Aries. And this is where the word Aryan comes from. A-R-Y-A-N, and uh, where the whole idea of a people group of very light complexion felt that they were superior to other people. And so with the activation of Mars in retrograde with uh, Alhetka and stuff, and Mars is the ruler of Aries, you're going to see a lot of people white supremacists, and other people that feel emboldened and that will feel that they want to act out their violence against random people or targeted people. This is predictive astrology, okay? And especially over the next three months because of what the heavens are basically uh, announcing to us, okay? So we see that happen. Now, to go a little bit further, uh, when you look into this, like I like to study the etymology of various stars and things like that, you know, uh, it, it also goes into giving the idea of radical uh, religious terrorism, radical religious terrorism. Now, we used to think, or not me, but a lot of people used to think that terrorists or brown people, black people over in the Middle East or in Africa or somewhere else, you know. And so, uh, but uh, this idea uh, with this conjunct taking place with Mars going retrograde, it is speaking of, you know, terrorism, of course, and radical uh, religious terrorism. But with Mars, that is the ruler of Aries, is showing me that of the Aryan race of people, of uh, people, <laughs> you know, that there will be an increase, whether that is in the form of war increasing over there in Europe or other wars taking, uh, breaking out, as well as in this nation and around the world where this anger and hate and violence will be uh, projected uh, toward people uh, that will be uh, terrorist acts. Now, uh, just to go a little bit further with this, um, let me see if I have another image here. I pulled several images that I wanted to kind of uh, uh, share with you to help you to understand this. I don't think I do. I think that was it. And I'm going to just wrap this up here pretty soon. So, so we have this here. Now, I want to point out another thing also. It means the driver. That is one of the definitions for Alhetka. It means the driver. So it is a fixed star uh, on the tip of the, the southern horn of Taurus. Okay. Now, another point about that here uh, is what we're going to see. Just moving from the realm of violence, which we see that the heavens are clearly saying that we're moving into. And now on top of that, you have a lunar eclipse that's taking place. Sun yet in Scorpio and the moon will be in Taurus. Okay, now moon in Taurus, that's on the 8th, on the 8th of November. Okay, the moon will be in Taurus, sun in Scorpio, eclipse, blood red moon, eclipse taking place, Mars, red planet going retrograde. Okay, after conjuncting with the tip of the right horn or the southern horn of the bull, which represent decapitation, violence, and I did say decapitation, increasing, things like that, that will increase uh, murder and things like that happening. And so, but you also find that Taurus represents like the house of finance. Okay, that is the, the market, the housing market and things of that sort. So with this conjunct that is taking place, with this Mars retrograde on the 30th of October and this um, eclipse that is taking place, uh, moon in Taurus, solar eclipse taking place in Taurus, this again, as I've announced on several videos and throughout the year, is showing us the housing and property market and things are about to take a really big hit. And it's not something that's going to be like just happening just for a few 
weeks or a couple of months or things like that. But you are in a time where the change is happening in the economy. The change is happening in the currency. All the signs are there. The heavens are announcing it. They are kind of giving us clues. You know, the feds are raising, raising all of this stuff that's happening. So every this house of cards, uh, like what I'm seeing in my mind, is, is just about to collapse. It's about to collapse. And so with these two events, that is going to trigger that and it's going to accelerate that whole thing. And it is necessary so that we can move into a new economy, so that we can move into what I guess is called the, a, a quantum financial system and uh, where things can change and eventually provide a level playing field for everyone. Remember at the beginning of this uh, broadcast, I told you that it is necessary to walk through the valley of the shadow of death so that you can move from the realm of shadows into life. It is necessary on every level. It's necessary even for this country, unfortunately, to go through the things that's going to be happening and as we've been talking about this election season, the craziness and the violence and stuff that is planned for it, and even the heavens are, you know, announcing it and showing it that it's going to be taking place. And uh, not only here, but in other countries around the world, you know, uh, just this increase of violence and terrorism and hate and craziness taking place. And so all of that is necessary in the sense that people are being exposed. People are being exposed, you know. We see them. We know who they are. You know, we know where they are, you know, and uh, and so eventually we will come out on the other side and just manifest all that we were called to manifest in the realm of light and experience uh, this wonderful uh, power uh, of God, as we call it, as we continue to evolve and manifest uh, this new heaven and new earth that must start within us, the new heaven, new mind, new way of thinking. Yod hey wah hey. Okay, shout out to Pastor Allen out there. All right. And uh and this new earth, this new physical form, this new physical body, and as so that this earth here that we have and the atmosphere above it will be changed. A change will not take place out there until a change takes place within us. And as we're walking through this experience, that change is happening. And a powerful evolution will come out of this involution. So a few takeaways from this, just uh, if you want to remember that during this time, a lot of people that are off balance will be acting out. Okay, So if you have relatives, if you have friends and stuff, watch them, make sure that they are balanced and calm or whatever, because you know, people just don't have control over themselves. And especially if you're not functioning at a higher level of consciousness and stuff, you're not aware and you're easily taken over using Christian terminology by spirits, by a uh, spirit of anger, hate, you know, uh, violence and things of that. So one other last point before I let you go in uh, Chinese astronomy, uh, that, that, uh, that star Alhetka, uh, which is Arabic, it is called, I can't remember the, the Mandarin name for it in Chinese, but it means, uh, what does it mean? It means the, it means the gate, uh, the gate to the celestial, the gate to the celestial. And so as we see there, we see that there is the negative side of it, the shadow side of it, but the positive side of it as uh, Mars conjuncts there with that, that is a portal, that is a portal to higher levels of consciousness. How is that a portal? Because you move through all the lower vibrations uh, from the lower chakras, the anger, the rage, and all of the other stuff, and it allows you to ascend into higher states of consciousness where it is the celestial garden, the celestial gate that is within you. You come to that place of peace and love, and you've dealt with all of those things, chip on your shoulder and the things that you've been carrying around that you didn't talk about, that you didn't get out and stuff. It allows you, this energy is allowing us to reconcile those things, to talk about those things, to have a conversation with someone. If you can't talk with them, text or email, you know, and just in love, of course, you know, not pointing, blaming like that, although it may be someone's fault, but, you know, at least getting it out, clearing yourself so that you can ascend into a higher level of consciousness in through this celestial gate as this is happening, this powerful event that is happening with uh, Mars retrograde and the conjunct with al Hekka, uh, which is the, the gate to the celestial and all of these things happening. So I want to leave you with this thought. 
and uh, just continue to ascend, continue to have your involutions and to be clear about it, continue to see what is going on around you. Don't close your eyes. Don't pretend like it's not happening. Pray, speak into things, declare, meditate, and uh, continue to just be the light, shine the light, speak the light, speak the light. We must speak. We must expose the things and stuff because there are a lot of people that just don't know. The prophet Isaiah says that you will be in a time where they will call good evil and evil good. They will call light darkness and darkness light. Aren't we in it? I mean, fake news that is on steroids. I mean, fake news like on crack. You know, every time you turn stuff on, and there's a whole lot of people that are, you would think that were the elect that are deceived and don't really know better and don't care. And they're caught up in the strong delusion. Yeshua said to us when they asked him, the apostles asked, give us a sign, show us, you know, how the end is going to be. The first thing he said, listen, mm -hmm. don't let anyone deceive you. So that there will be a lot of deception, a lot of smoke and mirrors, a lot of sleight of hand. So look, you know, but see with your third eye. Look, but see with your third eye what is going on. And uh, just, you know, handle yourself accordingly. And we thank you uh, for coming to be a part of this session here. And bless you. Uh, and you have a great season uh, throughout uh this fall season, and we will see you next time. Now, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to click the uh, notification button. And you can also uh, give a donation if you like to. Okay, that would be great. We appreciate all of those things. Okay.